Hey everyone. So today we are starting with another chapter of O-level chemistry which is the atomic structure. So let's begin by imagining a glass of water, the smoke coming out of a factory or a wooden hammer. They are composed of either atoms themselves or molecules which are themselves combination of various atoms. So the question remains what is an atom? An atom is the smallest particle of matter. So everything we see around ourselves is made up of atoms. We used to think of it as indestructible, but now today's technology has proved that atoms are not indestructible. There are subatomic particles present within the atom. Within each atom, there is a nucleus which is present at the center of an atom. And another thing is known as the electronic shells or somehow we can also call them the energy levels. Within the nucleus, there are two subatomic particles present known as the protons and the neutrons. While, the, while as the name suggests, the electronic shells consist of electrons. So protons and neutrons are present inside the nucleus that is why we also call these particles as the nucleons because nucleus is the place where they reside. And that is why they are called nucleons. We know that atoms combine chemically through bonding with other atoms to make molecules to make various different kind of compounds. These atoms can combine with similar atoms or with other atoms of different kinds. Imagine an atom and a nucleus. The nucleus has protons and neutrons in it. The red ones are supposedly protons. The blue ones are the neutrons. While there are electronic shells around the nucleus. These shells have those electrons which are constantly revolving around the nucleus. Now let's label them. The particles drawn with a red are protons, the blue ones are neutrons. So we have a nucleus inside the center, there are electronic shells, we have two shells over here, first shell and the second shell. Apparently there are only two shells, so we can also call the second shell as the outermost shell. The blue ones are the neutrons which are neutral particles, so they do not have any charge on them. They are called neutrons because they are neutral. They don't have a charge on them. The red ones are the protons which have a positive charge on them. It means that they are positively charged particles and they will be attracted towards the negative charges. Protons have a plus charge. That is why we write them with a P and then there's a plus on top of it. We can also write them like that. The electrons which are revolving in shells around the nucleus have a negative charge on them. That is why you can also see them being written as an E with a negative charge on the top of the letter E. Overall atoms are neutral. How is that possible? Because the electrons and the protons are both oppositely charged and these particles are equal in number. So imagine in this particular case we have 9 protons and 9 electrons, electrons being the negative, protons being the positive, the total charge cancels out. That is why electrons and protons are equal in a typical atom. Now coming back to the idea of electrons revolving in shells around the nucleus, that is something that we are going to do as electronic configuration. Let's meanwhile jump to the idea of subatomic particles. We have electrons, we have protons and neutrons. I drew them and now you can compare their sizes as well. The yellow one is the electron, the red one is the proton and the blue one which is apparently the biggest one over here is the neutron. When we talk about M and C, I'm referring to the mass of these particles and the charge of these particles. M means mass, C means charge. Electrons and protons obviously have the same charge but different in their um, signs, different in their directions, different in their values. Electrons 
are very small compared to the other particles, electrons have a mass of only 9.10 exponent minus 28 kg. Protons have a mass of 1.672 exponent minus 24 kg, which means they are very heavier compared to electrons. Neutrons have a mass of 1.6740 exponent minus 24 kg, which means they are very similar to protons. Since we can see protons and neutrons are very similar, we call them to have a relative mass of 1 unit and electron comparatively has a mass of 0 0.0005. These are the relative mass values. When we talk about their charges, electron and proton have similar charges which is 1.60 exponent minus 19 coulomb. Coulomb is a unit of charge. Neutron as we talked about it has no charge. The only difference between the charges of proton and electron is their sign. Electrons are considered to have a minus one charge, protons are considered to have a plus one charge. When we talk about atomic number and atomic mass, that is something that is also very important based on the foundation of this chapter. You might have seen many atoms written with a subscript and a superscript on the left hand side. The subscript is the atomic number. Atomic number is the number of protons inside the nucleus. It is very unique because all the same atoms of the same element always have the same atomic number which is represented by the letter Z. Atomic mass is written as a superscript on the left side. Atomic mass is the number of neut uh, neutrons um, and protons inside the nucleus. So we can also say atomic mass is the number of nucleons, that is neutrons plus protons inside the nucleus. So here we are referring to the sum of neutrons plus protons inside the nucleus. It is represented by the letter A. A means proton and neutron both, but the letter Z means only proton. So if someone wants to count the number of neutrons, that is very simple that you subtract atomic number from atomic mass. Now let's do a very simple practice exercise. We have four different atoms with their own protons and neutrons inside their nuclei. The red ones are the protons, the blue ones are the, uh, the nu neutrons, and we have the orange dots which are the electrons inside their electronic shells. Let's call them W, X, Y, Z. Let's count their electron, proton, and neutron. Now let's think about it. We can count the number of protons very easily, which are the red dots. So particle X has four protons, particle Y has five, and particle Z has apparently one, two, three, four, five, eleven. Yeah, that is eleven protons. Now we want to count the number of neutrons. So when we talk about counting their number of neutrons, we can simply see that there is six in the particle W, then five, then again five in Y, and then particle Z has seven neutrons. We can also count the number of electrons over here because they are present on the shells. So X has four electrons, Y has five electrons, and Z has overall 10 electrons inside its shells. So we can write the proton number very simply as a subscript on the left side. We can simply write the proton number. But when we talk about the atomic mass, which is a superscript on the left side, which means top left. We have to count both protons and neutrons. So 7 plus 6 was 13, 4 plus 9, 4 plus 5 was 9, 5 and 5 was 10, and 11 and 7 were 17. So atomic mass is written after counting them. When we talk about counting the number of electrons, in particle W, electrons are more than protons. So we write a charge of minus 3. In particle X, electron and proton are same, so there is no charge, zero. In particle Y, the electron and proton are again same, so charge of zero. In particle Z, the number of electron is less than the number of protons. That is why it is a charge of plus one, which means plus means less electrons and one means how less, how many? How, how many fewer electrons there are. So there is one electron fewer. So that is why Z has a charge of plus one. 
and that is how we write the atomic notation. In the coming video we are going to talk more about how we can talk about the subatomic particles and their quantities. Stay tuned guys. Thanks.